Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. You know what I'm wondering? Will a factory naturally aspirated cam work as good or better than a factory supercharged cam on a supercharged combination? Part two of the question. Will an aftermarket naturally aspirated cam work better than an aftermarket supercharged cam on a blower motor? Wait, Richard, it's a blower motor. It needs a blower cam. Or does it? In this video, we're going to take a look at two different supercharged cam comparisons. Test number one was run on a Kenny Bell twin screw supercharged LS3 crate motor. On that combination, I ran a factory LS3 camshaft, a factory LS9 camshaft, and a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 blower cam. In the test two, we stepped up. We ran a GM Performance Parts B15 crate motor and ran four different camshafts. I ran a factory blower LSA cam, a factory blower LS9 cam, once again added in the Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 blower cam, and then just to spice things up a little bit, I added a naturally aspirated camshaft to our blower cam test. What happened? Now that we've seen the power, the changes in the power curves offered by the three different camshafts, let's take a look at the boost curves associated with those, and we can kind of correlate what's happening between what happens with the boost pressure supplied by the supercharger and then the gains that we saw previously. So this is the power curve or the boost curve offered by our factory LS3 cam with the Kenny Bell twin screw supercharger. We can see we started out at about 8.1 pounds. It dropped down to 7.9 pounds and then rose fairly sharply after 5,000 RPM to a peak of 10.6. This scale is a little bit <laughs> small. I mean, that's only a change of two and a half pounds. So it looks like that's a, that's a dramatic rise, but it's not, um, it's not as much as it's showing here. So now let's take a look at our LS9 camshaft. The LS9 camshaft started out making more boost. Um, the peak boost was up to, or the uh, starting boost was 8.7 pounds, it again also dipped down to 8.6 pounds, so a tenth of a pound is really not much to talk about, but then rose to a peak of 10.9 pounds. So the boost was down basically everywhere for the LS3 cam compared to the LS9 cam. So now let's take a look at our final camshaft, that's the BTR Stage 3 camshaft. And so you can see the BTR Stage 3 camshaft is in red now and it makes less boost or there was less boost being produced by this combination with this camshaft than either of the other two. And I know what you're thinking, yeah, but Richard, you should raise the boost now to equalize the boost. No, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> what we should do is show then marvel in the fact that when we put a camshaft in there and it makes the supercharged combination more efficient without changing the pulley size and we drop boost, we went up in power. That's always a good thing. So now let's take a look at our next combination. Our first test was run on a Kenny Bell supercharged crate LS3 motor. The LS3 was basically all factory. We had put head studs in it and um, head gaskets. We also changed the valve springs to accommodate these different camshafts that we were running. We ran a Kenny Bell 2.8 liter twin screw supercharger and that was equipped with a 3.75 inch blower pulley. It had the big 168 millimeter throttle body on the Mammoth intake for the Kenny Bell to make sure that we had a good induction system on there. We had to hook our engine 7 8 headers. We had uh, the Holly HP management system, and then we started out with a factory LS3 camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. Um, I've run LSA, LS9, those kinds of camshafts. In fact, we're going to be seeing that on the next combination, but I wanted to try something different here. So we tried the factory LS3 cam, since this was an LS3 crate motor, and run with the supercharger. So run with the Kenny Bell supercharger, our LS3 camshaft produced peak numbers of 712 horsepower and produced peak torque of 618 foot-pounds. Well, here's what happened when we replaced the LS3 camshaft with the factory supercharged LS9 camshaft. We can see that the bigger LS9 camshaft, also it was more designed for, from the factory, uh, by the factory for a force induction application, and the LS9 camshaft did improve power out at the top, it picked power up to 744. Peak torque was up just a little bit because most of the gains came past 5,000 RPM for the bigger camshaft, but peak torque was up to 629 foot-pounds. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here for the LS9 camshaft. You can see and kind of compare that to the LS3. And the final step was to install the Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 blower cam, and because we had a 
positive displacement blower, although this one was a twin screw. And with the Kenny Bell 2.8 liter, the bigger camshaft obviously helped quite a bit. Again, we'll put the specs up for the BTR stage three cam. We were looking at 765 or 70 horsepower out there at the top, 770 something, and 643 foot-pounds of torque. There were gains through most of the curve, at least above 4,000 RPM for the blower cam. Now, we might have seen down low that there would be a trade-off. I would kind of expect the LS3 cam maybe to be the best of the three down low. Um, it would be interesting to see. I don't know how many guys are getting into the throttle at 2,000 RPM on their Kenny Bell supercharged <laughs> LS3 crate motor, but it would be interesting to see if there was a trade-off, and I kind of would expect that there would that would be the case. Now that we've seen the power gains offered by the camshaft with no pulley change, let's take a look and see what happened with the boost curve. Now we're going to take a look at another 6.2 liter combination that we ran a blower dedicated positive displacement blower cam test on, but I also added another NA cam. So this is really interesting stuff. So this was a 6.2 liter. This one was a B15 crate motor from GM Performance Parts, meaning it was designed for force induction and it had low compression. It had rec port heads. It had no induction system on it. We changed the springs on it so that we could put all of these camshafts in it. And then we added a Whipple four liter supercharger to it and we ran a pulley combination that was a 4.75 inch blower pulley and an 8 inch crank pulley on the Whipple and it, we're going to take a look at the boost curves as well. We started off with running an engine 7 8 headers, Holley, HP management system, 83 pound injectors, all that stuff. So we started off running the factory LSA camshaft and I'll go ahead and put the cam specs up here so you can see it's pretty mild but it's the factory blower cam running the LSA motors and equipped with that our combination produced right at 700 horsepower 699.4 and 671 foot-pounds of torque. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the LS9. So the LS9 is an upgrade for the LSA. It's wilder cam combination. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. You can see it's definitely a bigger cam. The LS9 motor from the factory makes more than the LSA. It has a bigger blower, better camshaft, and this one did indeed pick up the power at the top. So we were up to 735 horsepower, but we also lost power down low compared to the smaller LSA cam, which is kind of what you would expect. It, it, was, it was down from 4,400 on down. And then we did what everyone kind of should do if they've got a positive displacement blower like this. We put a bigger positive displacement blower cam in it. We put the stage three from Brian Tooley Racing. As always, I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. And you can see that it improved the power out through power output through most of the RPM range. We might see a little bit of a drop down below 3,300, but the peak power was all the way up to 768, and those gains would increase. We were only re we only revved this thing to 6,200. We probably should have gone a little bit farther than that. But the interesting thing is, and we're going to take a look at the boost curves in just a minute, but the interesting thing is I wanted to see what would happen if we ran some kind of NA camshaft on it, something that doesn't have a 120-degree LSA, or something that isn't designed to to kind of drop low speed power and anticipation of gaining power out at the top. So if I want more low speed power on a positive displacement blower, what happens if we run an NA style cam? And I had one laying around, it was the crane cam that I'd run on a bunch of stuff. But the, the NA cams from Ryan Tooley Racing, Stage 1, Stage 2, all of those would work and from other manufacturers as well. I'm just showing you what these kinds of cam specs do. So I'll go ahead and put the cam specs up for the 224. Um, and you can see that it did exactly what we expected. It made a lot more low speed power than the LS9 or LSA um, camshafts and even a little more than the Brian Tooley um, dedicated positive displacement blower cam, but it makes less power at the top. And were we to run this thing to 6,500 or 6,700 or 7,000, we would see an even bigger change between the two. So as always, the, <laughs> the question is, where do you want your power production? It might be that you're already gonna have traction problems with 650 foot-pounds of torque, and the last thing you want is more torque. You want it all up top, in which case the blower cam probably is the way to go, but now it's time to check out the boost curves. Now that we've taken a look at the power gains offered by the different camshafts on the Boost Ready B15 crate motor from GM Performance Parts, let's take a look at the associated boost curve. So this is the boost curve associated with the LSA camshaft, and you can see we have a rising curve with our Whipple supercharger. Started out at 12.4 pounds and went up to a peak of 17.4 pounds. Here's what happened when we installed the LS9 camshaft. The LS9 camshaft actually showed a little bit more boost uh, up until about 5200 and then showed less boost. Now you're thinking, but Richard, it made less power. 
but it had more boost down low. That's right. <laughs> and one of them is causing the other. And it's not the way that most people think. The more boost doesn't cause the more power in this case. When we change the camshaft and you drop the boost, which we did at the top, that's when you'll normally see a power gain. So we'll see if there's a pattern here. So the LS9 camshaft made more power at the top at a lower boost level and less power down low at a higher boost level. So here's what happened when we put the um, Brian Tooley camshaft in there. Uh, less boost than the, um, than the LS9 camshaft, basically less boost everywhere. It dropped the boost and we saw it made quite a bit more power out at the top. It's quite a bit less boost than the, um, LSA camshaft, a little bit more down low. And, and we can probably see a little bit of that going on. Here's what happened when we put the 224 camshaft in there with well, the 224 camshaft. It basically made less boost everywhere. Now, now here's what I want people to comment on. Is that because now it's an NA cam and it's not a blower cam and now all the boost is leaking out? <laughs> Let me know if you guys think that that's the case. Uh, when we look at the power curve, we see that the 224 cam made more power down low and we see that associated with boost. It did make a little bit less power right at the top, and that's kind of where the the boost pressure was actually starting to climb. But even then, it's still making less boost than the uh, BTR cam or the LS9 cam, or and obviously the LSA cam. But why then did it make less power than the um, than the Stage 3 cam on the top? Let me know in the comments. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this comparison of our two 6.2 liter test motors running a Whipple on one of them and a Kenny Bell on the other and then a variety of different camshafts? Did we realize that we have to run a blower cam on our supercharged combinations? The answer to that obviously is no. In fact, if you look at the results, all of the cams work. None of them just decided, hey, I'm on a blower motor, I'm not a blower cam, and I'm not going to work. Now, there were cams that worked better than others. The LS9 cam worked better than the LSA cam. The LS9 cam worked also better than the factory LS3 cam, but the Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 dedicated blower cam worked better than all of those, and that's not surprising. It is a bigger, better cam. The interesting thing, and the, really the reason that I wanted to do this video, was that we implemented this naturally aspirated cam into this test, and it shows you the following thing, and this is usually the case with any kind of camshaft. Whether we run these things naturally aspirated, or whether we run them with a turbo or a centrifugal blower, when you choose your camshaft, you should choose your camshaft for the RPM range that you plan on running and spending most of your time at. If you have a blower motor like this, and you don't want huge power out at 7,000 RPM, and you rather have more low speed power, assuming in these cases that you had the available traction, because let's face it, if you have six or seven or 800 foot pounds of torque down low, maybe Maybe more torque isn't the thing that you need, but if it is the thing that you want, a milder camshaft like our naturally aspirated cam works very well. Arbiter Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing as always coming up.